Let me ask you a question. Do you think photorealism is hard to achieve? I'm about to show you how to create this render here very easily using Reality Capture and Blender Octane. You don't need this massive budget or all this high-end equipment to achieve photorealism. You just need the right workflow. By the end of this video, I'm going to show you how to achieve this photogenic render. Enough of my jibba jabba. Let's get straight into it. Hey, so if you're new here, my name is Patrick LeVar. I make videos using Blender Octane. If you're not happy with cycles or if you're coming from Cinema 4D and you used Octane, this is the channel for you. I'm teaching what I'm learning using Octane because there's not a lot of videos out there. So I'm just sharing the love and trying to get the word out there for Octane users. So consider smashing that like button and hitting the subscribe button and enough of my jibba jab, but let's get back to the video. All right. So first thing first, I want to talk about the tools that you need to do something like this or make a render like this. The first tool that I used was my cell phone. I have a Samsung Note 8, very old phone, nothing high end at the moment, right? Very old. I did shoot my photos in raw. What do you mean by I shot photos? Yes, I actually made a 3D scan of the stairs just outside the door here on my apartment. And what I used was reality capture. And I didn't know that reality capture was free. But the last time I ever looked into reality capture, they charge per output, right? Every time you export something out, they would charge you. Well, it's actually free now. And I didn't know that I immediately jumped on there and downloaded it. So here it is at Epic Games. I have reality capture 1.41. And at the time of this video, it is free. OK, so that's what I use. The next tool that I use was Blender Octane, the Octane standalone version. And again, Octane Blender is free. You got a cell phone. You got the free version of reality capture and you got Blender Octane free edition. You're OK to go from here. What I did was I took a bunch of photos right outside my door. And typically I've done photos scans before and they always come out like crap. But this time I did something slightly different. I shot my photos and I saved them as raw DNGs, right? Once you save those DNGs, make sure you got space on your phone. You're going to have a way. It's just the results are going to be way better. I've always just shot standard JPEGs. This time I shot them in DNGs and I brought everything into Lightroom because again, what we're going to do with these DNGs or these images, we're going to delight them. And the, the workflow this is my first time using this workflow. What I basically going to do is we're going to take the shadows. We're going to lower the shadows as much as possible. And we're going to lower the, the, the highs. Basically here you can see making adjustments. I'm going to basically take down the highlights and I'm going to D take out this, the, the, uh, the shadows. So we're trying to get a super flat D contrasting image as possible. A very flat image. This helps out reality capture. And this is the first time I've ever done that. Cause typically let me stop this video right here. I've always just kept the DNGs and I've never did any type of post processing to them. So they were super contrasty and that contrast gets burnt into your textures. And then plus it also affects the way reality capture or whatever scanning pro pro program you're using. It really helps to, to process that and help it to get a better, cleaner mesh. OK, first time using reality capture. I've never used it before. OK, because it was always charged. I always use mesh room. So this time I just followed the standard default workflow video that they have like right in the beginning, like first time using. Yes, I hit that. What we do is we're going to take these images I saved from Lightroom because I took this, you know, I again, decontrasted, take the highlights out, take the shadows out. Very flat image brought those into reality capture. Now, reality capture doesn't recognize the lens. No big deal. I literally just followed the step by step guide on here. I didn't change anything. Hit the align button. Now it's going to align your images. This takes about it can depend on how big your system is. For me, it took it didn't take that long. So once of that, I have the mesh, the uh, the point cloud of what my my staircase was looking like. Right. So from here, what we're going to do after you checked out and see if everything looks aligned and it looks really good, I'm going to set the ground plane so I can basically say, hey, this is the ground level this thing off. And I'm just basically going to get it leveled and basically, you know, get the uh, the bounding box also of what I want to be in the process of being scanned. So any junk that you don't want this bounding box here, you're going to use that to help you say, OK, I only want this part and I only want this part. Right. Very straightforward. Nothing too complex. Again, you can see here on the right, I do have the instructions open because I'm using the first step plan. So I didn't do anything special. I don't need that extra stuff in the back there. So I'm trimming that off and I'm trimming a little bit off the front because I already knew what kind of shot I want before I even started this. When I was taking my photos, I was thinking, OK, this is going to be the render image. I want this to be the angle. So keep that in mind before you start scanning. Think about your final shot. OK, 
Now from here, I'm doing a reconstruction of the preview view. The preview view is not the, the final image. This is just going to basically show you what the mesh looks like. And right here, I've never had a clean mesh like this before. I always had like, it was always blurry and blotchy. Like using DNGs, decontrasting the image really helps. Now I'm going to reconstruct the normal detail. This is like the mid-level. You could go higher, but from all of the videos, look at the detail, guys. Like already I was like, this is going to look great. Like I've never gotten a, a scan this good. Plus I've never used reality capture before. <laughs> so next we go with the textures. And again, we want that flat texture. Look, I don't, we, we don't want any shadows in there because we want to be able to have our own shadows. Once we make the light, once we set up our scene, we can, you know, use our lights in the CG. So you want your image to be as flat as possible. And that's what I got here. It looks almost like log, like I shot it in log or something, right? It looks really, really nice. And this is half the battle of getting close to photorealism, right? From here, I export this mess out. Small commercial break. If you're getting any value out of this video, guys, smash that like button for me. And as a gift or smashing that like button, you can jump over to my Gumroad. I've got all of this free stuff here for Blender Octane. Materials, little add, little plugins and things that I've been working on, like this little geo drop generator for Octane Blender. And again, I've got just assets that I've made from different projects. I put them all on this gum roll. Almost every, actually everything on here is free, except these two little VFX courses. Everything else is free, guys. I got a free Blender Octane startup file, which you just download. This helps you get started up. But the, the settings and everything is all set up. You just pop the file in and you're ready to go. If you're interested in that, take a look at the gum roll. Lots of free stuff. And if you're really serious and you want to go hardcore, Take a look at my Blender Octane School community right now for the next week. I'm going to be taking five bucks off. So it is 10 bucks. Normally costs 15 bucks to get in a month. This is 10 bucks straight up. Or if you want to pay annual, you, that option has just been added. So take a look. We got material asset. You can come in here and I got a big material asset library that is constantly growing. You can have access to it. We got node setups one on one with me. Whatever you guys need community help. This is where it's at. Blender Octane. Back to the video, enough of my gym, gym. This mesh out and then bring it into Blender Octane. Here now I'm going to set up my scene. Now it comes in, it's a cycles material. For those of you who are using Blender Octane, hang on, step back first. Right now, the scale on this thing is massive. I'm scaling it down to real world scale. Always have some type of reference in your, in your uh, let me pause it for one second here because this is important. Always make sure, you should really get in the habit anytime you are, sorry, we lost you guys. I lost the camera there. Anytime you are working in 3D, always try to work to always work to real world, real world scale. I have this character in here just to always have to keep me in check of, okay, when I'm working on something to, to bring it into real world scale. When I first brought this in, like if I back up to this thing is massive. This thing is the size of a, of a building, right? And if I didn't have some type of reference in here, I would have never known. I would have just started building my scene off of that and the light values. The things just don't work properly, especially with Octane. Octane was built off of real world value. So you really need to work to real world scale whenever you're using Octane. OK, so that's what I'm basically doing here. I'm shrinking this down, getting this down to real world scale. I literally went outside to my steps and, and stood next to my stairs to see where the stairs ended. And it was a little bit just above my ankle, almost a little bit in, you know, but lower my lower of my cap. So I knew that and I set that up. Now I'm going to convert my materials. And again, in Octane, when we're using cycles, if it's a very simple material, like this is just one PBR material, I can convert that easily with the clip of a switch. Boom. I have this Octane converter. It converts cycles materials to Octane. Okay. Once we do that, and this comes standard with Octane Blender, right? Now we got our PBR material, which is super easy. And now I've converted it and now I'm in Octane here. And I mean, look at the speed I've got in Octane. This is absolutely fantastic. So from here, the hard parts are over now. Now the fun begins. Now we just start to create our stuff. I've got this preset pack of lenses that I'm building these cin cinematic lenses because Octane's camera system is extremely advanced. You can really make your, your cameras look close to real world with lens distortion, uh, all kinds of settings I'm not going to get into in this video. So I built this whole preset of, of different lenses with different focal lengths and I've set them up to get my shot. Now, now I'm look. I knew what shot I wanted already. I had it in mind before I even started. This was like, so now I'm going, okay, well maybe let me experiment with a different angle. Maybe we can try something different that I didn't see when I was trying to set it up outside for my first initial. 
But then I start adding in some junk. I have this asset here, which is also available for members who are in my Blender Octane community. This trash asset used to work for cycles. I converted it over to Octane. It took a few weeks of converting all these individual trash elements. But now I'm just bringing in some trash into the scene just to kind of like, you know, like real world, like, yeah, there will be a cigarette butt on the floor, right? And this little box here, like the box of trash, throwing it in the background just to get it out of depth, you know? And now again, playing with HDRs, different lightings, different lighting scenarios. And for me, I've kind of settled on just like a little bit of a more realistic. I went outside and hang on, let me pause it for a second. I literally just went outside the door and looked and it was about 5 p.m. on a cloudy day. And I'm like, oh, this this looks like very flat, look, bluish a little bit, no shadows. I like that. Let me look for an HDR, a cloudy HDR. I was literally just using real world reference. And that really helps, guys, like to have some type of real world reference to help you build a photogenic looking image. And this is what basically the results that are coming out with it here. From there, now it was literally just adding the spice. I have an even Herbert, Ian Hubert uh, asset with these little tiny like gnats. They're supposed to be like flying around. Again, it's just an image on a plane. I can take that, type it into the opacity, and I was able to get that also into the shot. So now this is pretty much the bulk of it. This was like the whole scene right here. From actually from here, we jump into DaVinci Resolve. I exported this thing out as EXRs. Always do EXRs. Please, if you're serious about 3D and renders, always export EXRs, right? Well, Gleb Alexandrov just released this DaVinci Resolve to Blender type color grading tutorial. And I've used some of the steps that I've learned from him and that just really took it to the next level, guys. So this is what the render looks like coming straight out of Blender. This is just using, um, I wasn't using the AGX. I'm just using standard RGB linear workflow EXRs. Like there is no, you know, EXR, there is no filmic. I'm not using any of that, I'm just straight up, right? So what I did was here, I'm actually converting this from a, if you look over here, let me jump in and zoom in on this. I'm converting this from a Rec 709 to linear. Okay, it's this is what is coming out of when I bring it an EXR from Blender into DaVinci Resolve. I set this up here, this color transform node, which we can just drop on here. And then I'm turning it to an RE wide gamut three with an RE log S3. Now, any of you who don't know what RE means, RE is RE Alexa, which are like some of the most baddest cinematographer ca cameras in the game. Like you can't even buy these things. You have to rent them. They don't even sell them to people. Like they're like, yo, you can use ours, but then we take it back, right? So I'm converting mine to this format or this basically this color space and this log format, right? So again, trying to copy what they would do in real world. Once I do that, I'm gonna need to convert this over so we can view it, right? So if I come over here and click on this, this one here is going to be my color grading. I'm gonna click over here and this is going to turn it so I can see what it's going to finally look like. Now you can clearly see what I've done here. I've went from RE I went from RE wide gamut and now I'm converting it to what we can see on our standard monitors to Rec 709 to a gamma 2.4, okay? A lot of this won't be, you won't understand this. You gotta watch Gleb's free lesson. Watch it, please. It's super powerful. From there, I jump over here and then I do my final like color grading and I'm using this plugin called Dehancer Pro. Dehancer is a film emulation pro uh, add-on it's like one of the best in the game. Like it is straight up. Matter of fact, I'm down below, I'll have a code. If you guys want to check it out, you get a couple bucks off to it, but it's expensive. I'm not going to lie to you. So I'm using that to, again, use a film emulation from some old film stock back in the 80s, right? I'm using a, a Fuji, whatever that is, Vivid 500. It, it expired in 2013. That's what I'm using on there. Again, adding more real world elements on top of that. So putting all that together, we get this, the final output here, the whole render looking like close to photogenic because I use as many photo elements as possible, real world elements as possible, lighting, real world depth of field settings, everything trying to be as close to all these little 1% add up to help you get that image to look like a true photo. If you guys want to learn how to use Octane Blender, check out this video here where I'll show you how to set it up and how to get started with Octane Blender. If you're really crazy and you, you're sold, I got a Blender Octane School community, which is 
private and we get down like this. This is how I've learned a lot of stuff from them. Links down in the description. Patrick LeVar, keep rendering.